Welcome to my second devlog video. It took me a bit longer to edit this video because some stuff came up in between like Resident Evil 3 and Final Fantasy 7 which I'm by the way streaming every day on this YouTube channel 8 p.m. Central European time just google the time and you'll know how late it is for me so if you want to have a little talk or something just join the stream and talk to me there that is if you don't want to join my discord channel which you should do anyway link to my discord in the description and if you enjoy these videos please leave a like and if you want to support me there are two links in the description one is for the anime blender beginner course and the second one is for my patreon where you can support me as well and gain some access to some of my files but now let's get into the video so first i started building a boot for my character simply extruded along a reference image, placed some vertices in the middle and also placed some squares for the creases there. That already gave me the base bottom of my shoe. Then I started extruding upwards, just roughly building the shoe out of form. I placed the whole boot in a different collection to keep everything sorted out. I placed it on my leg and did some rough sculpting just to fit it on the leg, as well as using some lattice to give it a slight roundish deform. And I did some additional sculpting after that. I placed some additional geometry around the boot, just simple extruding and a subdivision modifier as well as a shrink wrap modifier and a solidify modifier. For the laces I used a curve which I arrayed along another curve so I had freedom of placing it just by deforming one of the curves. You can see me doing that right here. Put some additional geometry on the crotch where you know when you have jeans like the crotch where the stipper is. And I did some more sculpting on the pants. I wasn't happy with my first try there, so I just, well, redid that. And I think it turned out way cleaner than before. Yeah, I did some comparing between before and after. I sometimes do that. I just open the file again, which I'm working on before I actually save. And I have the old version and the new version and I can compare it. And if it's better, I just save over it. Did some additional sculpting on my bags before they were just simple squares more or less and I just deformed them a little bit to give them a more realistic falling uh, bending. Next I decided to do some sculpting on the face, like you can see I have uh, more realistic lips and nose here, which is a rather big decision for anime characters because they don't always have that, but they sometimes have it. You, if you look closer at certain animes like Bakamonogatari or something like that, you often see anime characters have more realistic lips and noses actually. And my ears also were way too simple even for anime characters. They needed some extra geometry to create proper outlines and shading. Also made my eyelashes a little bit more fancy here. And I played around with displacing my teeth for which I used some weight painting and well some modifiers which you can see on the right because I didn't really see the purpose of rebuilding a whole proper teeth structure. Next I went to building the eye for which I simply used a sphere. I pushed in the front, copied the front and mirrored it to the front so it's reacting like a lens so I could have some refractions going on. I deleted some unused vertices and added some to the front to make it more roundish, more smoother. I added the refraction to the lens as well as used some vertex colors to mask out the lens, the texture part and the white of the eye. And I used some simple nodes to create some circles on my eye. And these circles are just simply deformed to create the iris and the outline around the eye and some artificial shadows I guess. Most of the eye are just simply deformed circles.
Later I added some additional detail to the eye, these white stripes. I might still adjust them a little bit or add more detail, but that's it for now. Here you have a quick overview over the eye. Let's take a look at the geometry first. We have three different parts. We have the lens out here, we have the texture part inside here, and obviously we have the white of the eye. If we take a look in rendered mode, you can see the inside is where the texture lays. The outside are just for refractions. You can see how it deforms depending on my viewing angle. And we have the mind obviously. And these three different parts are separated by a seam. You can see the red line here, which is a seam. If I go into face selection mode and I go over with a mouse over something and I press L on my keyboard, I can select these three different parts individually. And with that, I can just simply select my lens out here, create a new material, press assign that way the material is only on the lens and this eyeglass material is simply one note, nothing special. And that will give us the refractions we have. But you also have to go to the material tab and select the eyeglass material, turn on screen space refractions under settings. And in the render settings, you also have to turn on screen space refractions and refractions. That way the refractions will work. Now for the texture, there are a few things. First of all, you have to make sure if we select it here, you can see how my UV is laid out. It's perfectly nice in the middle. That way you can easier work with nodes. If you want to rebuild it, you have to have this UV layout here for your inside. Next, I went into Vertex Paint and I separated my three parts by RGB. R, G, B, red, green, blue. You can simply do that by making sure you have the seam around here, face select mode, Go with the mouse over one part, press L and you have it selected. You can go into Vertex Paint, then over here under the brush settings you just simply go under RGB, make sure you only have one full color, either red or green or blue. Then you can, can go to Paint, set Vertex Color and you can see the color change to what I have here. Obviously I don't want it right now because I already did it. Just make sure you separate like I did, Edit Mode, select one part, tap Vertex Paint, make this red here. Best would be you make it the same as I have and you go to paint, set vertex color and it will be red. And you can do that with all three of them so they're separated. Next let's take a look at my node setup for the texture. This is a different material like I said. And if we take a look here at the nodes, you can just rebuild it if you want. I'm not going into detail here but let me zoom over it. I will also put a high resolution picture in the description if you want it. So you can zoom in. But let me just go over here just in case. And that way I build the eye, nothing too special. Here you can see me working on my shotgun shells, which I used as an excuse to work on some custom math reflections. It was quite some work because I had to make sure that the math also works out in Unreal 4 later on, but I think it turned out pretty fine and I'm definitely sure it's going to work in Unreal 4 as well. Next I started working on the hair retropology. For those who don't know what a retropology is, you basically overlap your existing model with a second skin of vertices and you make sure the flow of the whole vertices is right simply to save vertices. Before doing retropology I had like 5 million individual points which are called vertices and after that I had like 50,000 which is quite a difference. 5 million, 50,000. Yeah. But soon enough I decided to not do the retropology for the hair and keep the individual strains. You can see I'm talking about the back of the head here. We have nice outlines going on. We can see them disappearing and appearing on the individual strands. But if you take a look at the retropology, it's just looking flat. It's just looking round. No like individual outlines. This could be fixed, but it's not worth the work to be honest. So instead of doing the retropology, I just decided to reduce the quality of the curves. And as a little hint here, you can select similar objects like curves or objects in general. And by holding Alt, you can change parameters over all selected objects. So you can see I select all the curves here, I hold Alt and I change the parameter here. So it's changing for all of them at the same time and I don't have to do it for each individual. Once I was happy with the resolution of the curves, I converted it into a mesh 
and deleted all the vertices which are not going to be seen anyway the inside vertices this is to save some vertices because i know my mesh will multiply in the end my mesh count will multiply in the end and i also played a little bit more around with the hair shader you can see how we have like a soft light in the shadow going on it's not done by any means i just had this idea and i wanted to try it out so we're showing you this here but i didn't really work much on it there's still a lot of stuff to adjust on the hair and then i started with the actual red topology like i said it's like a second skin which you snap onto the surface of everything to reduce the individual point count yeah? so you have a more efficient mesh. Doing a red topology is not necessarily hard, it's just very tedious because you have to think about the flow of the vertices all the time. And that is what took the most time since my last devlog video. And I also had a discussion with someone on my Discord about the face red topology because he wanted to try it. So I'm also including some of my face retopology here in this video right now. But I'm not going to show you all of my retopology footage. Let's just assume it's magically done, even though it took me three days or whatever. I really have to find a quicker way of doing that. After the retopology is done, I was placing some seams that allows me, like I said earlier, to select certain areas of the mesh right away with face selection. And they prepare me for unwrapping my mesh as well because I need to unwrap it properly if I want to use textures. Here you can see I'm selecting the areas which should have the same color. And then I went into a vertex pane and I simply assigned the color I wanted on there. And I did this for the whole mesh, so I would have my colors back like you can see here. And you can also see I have a lot of shrink wrap modifiers, which are used to snap my retopology mesh onto my original objects. To make this work, I had to use a lot of different vertex groups. Vertex groups are just what it says, it's a group of vertex. You can simply create one by going into edit mode, selecting a bunch of vertices, pressing Ctrl G and assign to new group. You can put this new assigned group into a modifier and that way you can tell the modifier to only use this certain group. The other vertices won't be affected. And here you can see I switched my subdivision for a multi-res which both do basically the same. They increase the quality. They increase their vertex count. And I put the multi-rest to simple. That way it won't deform anything. So the shrink wraps can work properly. Next I deleted the subdivision. It's not needed anymore. And I started applying all my shrink wrap modifiers in the right order from the top to the bottom. Normally you wouldn't do that because one modifier is above the multi-rest. But in this special case, the shrink wrap modifiers are going to be stored in the multi -res. Here you can see when I'm turning off the multi -res, I have my normal red topology, which looks a bit smooth, smoothy. And if I turn it on, I have my subdivided version with the shrink wraps applied. This is why I love this modifier so much. Without any extra work, you have a high res and a low res version. Low res for being far away from the model and a high res version for being close in the model, which is called LOD. It's usually used for game engines, but you can use it in 3D engines as well. And it's just no extra work at all. 